I can't properly put into words how much I truly love Captain America as a character. He's everything good that America can take pride in. The ability to stand up for what's right. The determination to look at those who are doing wrong and not back away. When he gets knocked down, he stands back up and says, I could do this all day. He's not a champion for unbridled jingoism. Far from it. Even when the real world America isn't showing itself in the best light, Captain America has always been there in the comics to hold a mirror to say, this is not who we are. He's the embodiment for the American dream. Not just for Americans, but for everyone. And as an American, I love that we have such a symbol in not just comic books, but for pop culture as a whole. Which got me thinking, who do other countries have as their version of Captain America? This question is a bit more complicated to answer than I originally thought, because it really comes down to where do you draw the line on who would be a country's Captain America? If you wanted to look purely at a one-to-one, -one, Captain Britain. Sure, he's got a patriotic uniform, and even has Captain in his moniker. But his powers are magic-based, and not a super soldier. There's Captain Carter, literally everything the exact same as Steve Rogers. But she's always considered to be from an alternate reality, regardless of which medium she's portrayed in. Or Captain Mexica, a zombie version based on Captain America, but from Mexico, that just appears in a single frame and is given no further details. There's also Trey Ranga or Captain Canuck, who are to a T exactly Captain America for India and Canada, but Triranga is made by Raj Comics, and Canuck is from Chapter House Comics, and since neither are Marvel, I gotta just stick with these characters or else this video would feel incomplete because I just simply can't get into every publisher. Or there's also that episode of Marvel's Superhero Squad, a two-season cartoon that skewed towards a much younger demographic that saw Captain America team up with his friends from other countries in order to get Wolverine to become the new Captain Canada. So Captain Britain, Captain Australia, Captain Brazil, and Captain Liechtenstein. But of course, they're never mentioned again after that one episode of a kid's cartoon, which puts them near the bottom of the tiers of canonicity. There's even a single issue of Marvel Fun and Games, a magazine published by Marvel that's an activity book, but there's one puzzle for kids to identify flags with their corresponding captains. As the magazine says, they are Captains Canada, Cuba, France, Greece, Japan, Panama, Sweden, Switzerland, and Turkey. But this magazine is so obscure that I couldn't even find reference photos for any of them on the internet. I had to hunt this issue down on eBay and scan them for this video. But, whatever. The line has to go somewhere. Which leaves us with only three actual analogs for Captain America for other countries. Patriotic national heroes from the main 616 continuity who are also super soldiers. Don't worry, I will get into them after I move the line out a little bit further. I can also look at heroes who could technically be their national hero, but not strictly at whether they're a super soldier or patriotically dressed. A great place to start would be the original run of Contest of Champions, which was Marvel Comics' celebration of the 1980s Olympics before the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan caused nearly every single nation to pull out of the event, and the nearly completed comic had to be retooled of all mentions of the games. But there were many heroes in there that represented their countries and are great to mention. But then there's plenty of heroes like Sunspot, who isn't themed or set up to be a national hero, but is still hugely significant to the people of Brazil that's worth mentioning. Or villains. Just by the nature of comic books focusing only on the good guys, there's always a lot more villains than heroes, and there's plenty more countries out there that can finally have a little bit of representation in Marvel Comics. Or if the heroes or villains from a country are still scraping the bottom of the barrel, but they have something more interesting in an alternate universe, well, I can at least give that country something. And as much as it kind of pains me to say, not all countries have a super-powered individual to wave their flag. First, I wrote it off as, well, maybe that country isn't as prominently known on the world stage that comic book writers in America would easily write about them. But then I noticed a trend. A lot of countries in, say, West Africa, Eastern Europe, and Southeast Asia were missing because most of the focus goes to the supposedly nearby fictional countries like Wakanda, Latveria, or Madripoor. A little weird that Marvel keeps all the real-world countries in lore, but most of the land and almost all of the stories are ceded to the fake ones. So there's no fictional or mythical countries on this list. And it's better that way, and I'm not padding out the runtime for an audience that doesn't exist. So, I am sorry, but none of the following 114 nations or UN Observer states have a superpowered character. I'm sad about this one, actually. Yeah, that one too. Sorry. I also want to include some characters whose heritage comes from that country, because while they themselves may not have been born in said country, they're still very important culturally speaking to those people. I'm going to include them because it will give some countries at least someone, but I will make a note of it. Oh, and before I forget, this list is supposed to be fun, so I'm very intentionally leaving out characters that draw negative stereotypes, 
or draw on fiercely negative aspects of a nation's history. I just want to stick with characters that people of that nation can be proud of. And lastly, I tried to cross-reference as much as I could with the comics and the Marvel Wiki. So big thanks to the Wiki. So without further ado, let's finally get into this. I've decided to give as many countries that I could a national hero, a why defined as someone who represents the country or their culture, a significant hero that more of the audience may know, a significant villain, and maybe an alternate universe mention if that better fits the country. Not every nation gets all four, but it's going to be something. Let's kick things off with North America to help demonstrate how I have my list set up. For my homeland, the United States of America, we of course have Captain America as our national hero, but I would say the most prominent superhero of all time from the United States is Spider-Man, with a great villain to represent the United States being Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin, but he's definitely taken on a much larger role outside of Spider-Man in recent titles. Canada's national hero would be Alpha Flight's Guardian, but their most prominent hero, of course, would be Wolverine, with Sabretooth as their most well-known villain. If possible, I'm also going to try to branch out to different titles just to spice things up. Yet, as you can see, the X-Men tend to be a lot more international than most titles, and the mutant-adjacent characters will make up a good chunk of this list. And it would be odd if I put Snowguard, one of the few non-mutant Canadian heroes, as their most prominent, even above Deadpool. The spot for National Hero of Mexico is also a good time to point out my thought process in several ways that I class this spot. I'm gonna pick Falcon, whose colors are the same as the Mexican flag and is closely associated with Captain America, but I could have just as easily slotted in El Muerto as a super-powered luchador who is very tied specifically to Mexican culture, or Red Locust, who is Marvel's nod to the actual national hero of Mexico, El Chapulín Colorado. She's from San Diego, but her ancient armor has been passed down from Aztec warriors, which is why I'm just going to add a small, subtle asterisk next to her photo. Either way, the most prominent hero above all of them is X-Force's Richter, so that spot is easy. However, there aren't many long-lasting villains from Mexico in the main continuity. There's Calavera, but he only lasted one single issue before Deadpool killed him, and if I can, I'm going to try to avoid the one-off appearances and the significant category. Although, I can bring in Scorpion from the Ultimates universe since he was Miles' first major threat once he became Spider-Man. From Belize, we have Hobgoblin, a fashion designer turned villain. Costa Rica has Alina, a mutant that Domino went on a murderous rampage to protect. And Honduras has Aura Charles, one of Bishop's war captains for Krakoa. And just to round things out, Panama can get a graphic for the fun and games Captain Panama. The Bahamas kind of has an alternate universe mention with Blink, since most of her stories come from the Age of Apocalypse version that can also teleport to other realities, though her main universe counterpart is brought back, so it's kind of up in the air. In Cuba, there's La Bandera, a mutant with the ability of emotion manipulation as a national hero. But Agent Morales, a top S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, is definitely more prominent. And Poison, a top Hydra agent. It's weird that they never had any kind of crossover, though. The Dominican Republic has the Black Panther villain, Wind Eagle, who uses the Wakandan design for Falcon's suit. Dr. Voodoo gets a spot for Haiti's national hero, being very tied to Haitian voodoo, and does actually become the Sorcerer Supreme. Haiti also has Nightingale, a clairvoyant healer who's basically Marvel's version of the Teen Titans Raven, as well as Calypso, the magical partner to Craven the Hunter. And from Jamaica, we have Raymond Coker, werewolf by night's douchebag neighbor who also happens to be a werewolf. Making our way down to South America, we also have our first of our Contest of Champions national heroes with Argentina's Defensor. Unlike the other heroes from that series, he's not particularly themed around Argentina, but he does have a vibranium shield, so he's closer to Cap than anyone else. But more prominently is Black Tarantula, who is basically a crime lord version of Spider-Man turned anti-hero. And they also have a villainous scientist who would rather not cure cancer, Sauron. Brazil has the previously mentioned Sunspot as a very significant hero, but I would like to spotlight my new favorite young mutant, Shark Girl. She's a girl who's also a shark. No notes. Colombia has a failed super soldier with El Toro as their main protector, but also the revived Lady Deathstrike, who went on to create the Sisterhood of Mutants. Peru has the gigantic Sorcerer Supreme of the Sixth Dimension with Taboro, as well as the villain Arachne, who was a scientist studying spiders in the Amazon rainforest. Even though that's her story, I doubt she's going to show up in Madame Web. And lastly, in Venezuela, is Wind Dancer, an airbending mutant who later joins the Space Pirates for Good, known as the Marauders. Hopping over the Atlantic, 
Algeria has M, who is a mutant with super strength and telekinesis, but she later changes into Penance, with a completely reworked moveset to have diamond skin and razor claws, with her brother being the villain M Plate, who is basically a mutant version of a vampire. Egypt has the Scarlet Scarab, who was recently reintroduced as Layla Al Fali from the Moon Knight series, but they also have the biggest X Men villain, Apocalypse. In Ethiopia, there's Moses Magnum, an arms dealer who's fought pretty much every hero at one point and gained seismic powers after pledging loyalty to Apocalypse. Next is the descendant of a Kenyan priestess whose immense powers often get her mistaken for a goddess. And because she's one of the few people actually worthy enough to wield Mjolnir, she kind of is. Storm. Oh, and she does get an asterisk because she was actually born in Manhattan and grew up in Cairo. Morocco has Tafrara, a former Sorcerer Supreme who aided witches and magic users over the last 2,000 years. As well as Jetstream, whose powers sound cool at first, he can shoot out heat and blasts and use them to fly like a jet, but like, he also doesn't have the ability to withstand any of his powers, so he just burns up and crashes, somehow he always appears in the Hellfire Club. Nigeria has Oya, a powerful mutant with heat manipulation abilities with both ice and fire powers who predates My Hero Academia's Todoroki by a few years. Somalia has Lightbright, a hero who can create and control light. South Africa has Maggot, a mutant with two bugs for a stomach that can eat through anything, but also Jubilee, the right-hand woman to Carnage and host to the Toxin symbiote. Tanzania has Ascari as a national hero, because he's also the president who can and throw energy blasts at people, as well as Minari, the mutant speedster kid from the X-Men animated series who helped fight back the Shadow King with Rogue and Storm. And Zambia has Impala, a very skilled assassin for hire. Kicking off our European tour, we have Nightcrawler's parents, Destiny, who's a precog, and the shapeshifting Mystique, who are both from Austria. Belarus has a national hero in Vanguard, a mutant who can create shields, and as the leader of the Winter Guard, the Soviet responds to the Avengers. Though his story began when he was a hero for the USSR, he slowly abandoned that cause as the years went on. Belarus also has Vanguard's former teammate who immediately turned hero, Darkstar, a mutant who basically has the same access to the Dark Force as Cloak and Shroud. And in Belgium begins a long list of national heroes as a nod to the European Union, known as the Superheroes of Europe. They would all technically make this list as they were more aligned with the patriotic theming and super suits of Captain America, but I'll be honest with you, most of them were barely mentioned ever again or were just basically cannon fodder for century when he went on a rampage across Europe. Don't expect too many details because honestly, there aren't any. But yeah, Belgium has the Belgian brain. More importantly, is an omega level matter manipulating mutant with Mr. M. Try saying that five times fast. Yet their biggest character is still Claw. Croatia has the Hulk's most well-known antagonist, Abomination. Czechia has the Mandarin's agent in the former USSR, Unicorn. Denmark has Kaecilius, though the main continuity doesn't give him a home of origin, but the MCU tie-in comic has him from Copenhagen, as a nod to actor Mad Mikkelsen's hometown. And Finland only has Chaplin, who, you know, just appears and dies. Sorry. France has Pelegrin from Contest of Champions, who is more or less like a super-powered version of Falcon. Get it? Because the name? Yeah, you get it. But also Guillotine a sword-wielding anti-hero who first appeared in the Contest of Champions mobile game before making her way to the comic. And France also has Batroc the Leaper, by exception to the no stereotypes rule because he's just too beloved to miss out on. Germany has another Contest of Champions hero, Blitzkrieg, and a key member of the X-Men, Nightcrawler. And Baron Zemo is also German in the comics. Greece has the superheroes of Europe, Oracle, but almost everyone would more associate the country with Elektra. Morbius is also from Greece, so, I apologize that the two worst rated Marvel superhero movies are based on characters from your country. Hungary has the new Madame Hydra, Viper. Iceland has Gunner and a psychic assassin named Lord Drain. Ireland has two different versions of Shamrock, one from the Contest of Champions and another from Superheroes of Europe. The Contest of Champions version was just very lucky and the other, well, wasn't. But of course, the main hero from Ireland is the X-Men's Banshee. Italy gets Gemini, a whole team for their national heroes, though the series never made it out of reprint and other translations, so I apologize if I can't elaborate further. But they also have a ridiculously high number of villains to pick from, but I'm gonna put Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine because she's gonna be huge in the MCU soon and because her name is just so much fun to say. And I'm gonna give Liechtenstein a sympathy card for the All-Captain Squad. Lithuania has an evil alchemist named Crucible. Norway has Pod, 
who merged with a planetary defense robot and now works for the good version of AIM. Poland has the Clown, a mercenary from the phenomenal Matt Fraction Hawkeye run, but I would argue that the most important character is the movie's version of Magneto. Romania, you know, the home of all things spooky, of course has Werewolf by Night, but also Gypsy Moth, a mutant who can manipulate matter. Which brings us to our first actual Captain America analog from another country, Russia's Red Guardian. Their stories are actually kind of sad. The first Red Guardian, Alexei Lebedev, actually fought alongside Captain America in the Second World War. But as we moved into the Cold War, his opposition to the USSR's super soldier program led him to die as a part of the Soviet purge. The second, Alexei Shostakov, was a famed pilot and the adoptive father of our Black Widow, but he was driven mad by the powers. They would keep trying to find a replacement Red Guardian, like Belarus's Vanguard, but they'd all either die from the experiments, be driven to exile, or terminated if they didn't tow the party line. There would be seven different Red Guardians, and that's not even including any of the life model decoys. But Russia does have a fantastic hero with Colossus, and a really cool villain with Kraven the Hunter. Serbia has Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, which is great that they're not actually from a fictional nation like in the MCU. Spain has El Aguila, an electric swashbuckling mutant as a national hero, though he is more of a joke character like he is in She-Hulk. They also have Empath, a new mutant with the power of empathy, and just because I love this character so much, King Carlos Javier. Sweden has Magma from the superheroes of Europe, and Bruto the Strongman, who is an evil carnival performer. Switzerland has White Cross from the superheroes of Europe, but also Red Rose, a plant controlling mutant who joins the Runaways, and Flag Smasher, who wants to destroy the concept of nations. Yeah, the MCU did him a lot better. Turkey has Flying Carpet from superheroes of Europe, but also Lord Tarak who is another vampire and the first underling of Dracula. Ukraine has Amazon from the superheroes of Europe, but also Red Widow, who was saved by Natasha from the Black Widow program and has been trained to become a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. And to close out Europe, we have the United Kingdom, home to the next Captain America nod, Union Jack. There have been three people to hold the mantle of Union Jack. Lord James Fallsworth, who, in the Marvel timeline, was one of the first masked heroes. Though he didn't have powers, but his son, Brian Fallsworth, would receive a knockoff serum by Red Skull's men and went on to fight for Britain in World War II alongside Captain America. The most well-established Union Jack is the third one, Joseph Chapman, a dock worker who happened upon the Fallsworth Manor and helped fight off a vampire with Captain America to save the elderly Brian. So, he was gifted with the suit, and became magically empowered by the Knights of Pendragon to basically give him the same powers as the other Union Jacks, and he would join MI5. Think of him as a mix between Captain America and James Bond. And I mean, yeah, he is. And to round it out, the UK's most significant hero is Blade, actually. It's often forgotten that he's from London. And of course, the most British villain of all Marvel comics, Mr. Sinister. And now we're on to Asia and the Middle East. In Afghanistan, there's Dust, a young mutant with the ability to control and turn herself into sand. Afghanistan and the multiverse is also home to Ho Yensen, the doctor that inspired Tony Stark to become Iron Man. He wasn't super powered like almost everyone else on this list, but he was the catalyst for the entirety of the MCU, and his sacrifice would lead Tony to do the same in Endgame. In Iran, there's the Horseman of Death, who was loyal to Apocalypse since the might of the Persian Empire, but he was killed off in Uncanny X-Men number 11, yet somehow returned to become the new head of the Pan-Asian School for the Unusually Gifted. But over in the Ultimates universe is the Colonel. He would, by all accounts, be a Captain America from another country, and he was created as an updated Ultimates version of Red Guardian, but with Iran swapped out with the USSR after Bush's Axis of Evil speech. He led a supervillain group called the Liberators with Loki, and comprised of other villains from China, North Korea, Russia, Syria, and France, because this was created in the period of Freedom Fries. Truly dumb times, I tell you. Anyways, the team was mostly forgettable, and the Colonel almost does cross that line into uncomfortable for a fun video about how awesome other countries are. Iraq has the group Desert Sword, mutants from around the Middle East who band together to fight off the Brotherhood of Mutants and Vitriol, an Iron Man villain who can turn her body into acid and can dissolve his armor. Israel has Sabra, a mute who appears in the Contest of Champions with a healing ability that she can share with others. But also, Charles Xavier's son, Legion, is from Israel, a mutant with disassociative identity disorder and an entirely different power set for each altar. Jordan has Rabble, one of Miles' classmates with the ability to control all technology, and is a rival of his both as Miles and Spider-Man. Lebanon has the hero Amulet, a lineage of heroes that conjure the Nazar, or Evil Eye. The newest amulet is from Michigan, but moves to Jersey City to aid Miss Marvel. Speaking of which, Miss Marvel. 
and Inhuman slash X-Men of Pakistani descent is significant for the people of Pakistan as one of the focal points of Marvel Comics and Marvel Studios moving forward. And it's truly wonderful to see how so many people have embraced her for the lovable nerd like all of us who read her comics. I also want to give a mention to the MCU's Red Daggers as an ancient order to protect the world from the Jinn. But in the comics, it's the non-superpowered Kareem. Saudi Arabia has Arabian Night, a magical Bedouin prince who wanders in the desert saving those in need, who also appears in contest of champions, Syria has Batal, who isn't given much information other than being an ambassador to the UN in peace talks between Syria and Israel. But in the Ultimates universe, Swarm from the Liberators does come to the side of good and later becomes Red Wasp with the Avengers. In Armenia, there's Crimson Dynamo, an Iron Man villain brought to life by Mickey Rourke in Iron Man 2. Bangladesh has the hero Enigma, a mutant who can teleport and maybe create flowers? It's not explained. Cambodia has Silhouette, a hero who can control darkness and access the Dark Force, as well as Tia, who hoards the power of the magic of all things for her evil magical cult. China has Collective Man as their national hero, who has actually five brothers who can combine to have the strength of, well, five men. But he's definitely gotten a lot stronger since Contest of Champions. Now he can absorb anyone and everyone to gain their strength. But the major hero from China it's got to be the martial arts master, Shang-Chi, as well as my new favorite villain because of the Spider-Man PS4 game, Mr. Negative. India has Trinary, a young mutant with technomancy, a very valuable ability while fighting against the Sentinels, but also the villain Omega Sentinel, a cyborg who controls all the Sentinels, and who is currently one of the big bads against all the X-Men. But of course, the greatest hero to represent India is Spider-Man of Earth 5101. Indonesia has Komodo, a student of Doc Connors, aka the Lizard, and eventually steals his serum to gain his powers as well. She's been a key member of the Avengers 50 States initiative as one of the trainees to become a new Avenger. Although, I don't think I found anything that confirms her as being from Indonesia or even of Indonesian descent. Her name, Maladi, is the national flower and is a very common name for young girls. And her hero name and power set is based off the island with the Komodo dragon. I'll put a heritage asterisk because it does seem more plausible, but it would feel off to, you know, assume she's from a country when she's only ever been shown as being an American. Just saying. Japan's national hero is without a doubt the Omega level fire controlling mutant Sunfire. Just a fun fact that I know every comic book YouTuber has mentioned at least once, Sunfire and Silver Samurai formed a team together that was called the Big Hero 6, except their Baymax look like this and not this. So if Kevin Feige said that all Marvel films ever made are now canon to the Sacred Timeline, but... Pixar and Tetsuya Nomura have both said that Kingdom Hearts 3 is actually canon to that series' event. So with that being said, it's entirely reasonable for Sora to appear in Avengers Secret Wars. Japan also has Armor, a young mutant with shielding abilities who was in the very extremely underrated X-Men anime. And Gorgon, a mutant who can turn people into stone with his eyes that serves both the Hand and Hydra. The third and final Captain America analog goes to South Korea with Taeguki, an orphan of the Korean War. A boy named Taewon was left with no other option but to become a petty thief at a young age. His adoptive aunt pleads with him to stop, but he has one last score in him, a government facility. As it turns out, they were planning on using the power of the Psylot gem to enhance a soldier, similar to how Juggernaut was enhanced by a gem in Korea. Tae gets caught in a device, and his thief friends leave him there to die, but instead, he becomes Tae Guki, which is also the name for the symbol of Korea. As a hero, his strength is on par with Thor, as the gem does come from from Asgard, and he can also shoot lasers out of his eyes. He's still a very new hero, only debuting in 2021, but he's starting to grow on me. South Korea also has White Fox, who is, well, a magical fox girl, and Luna Snow, a K-pop singer with ice powers, who first debuted in the mobile game Marvel Future Fight, but has since made her way to Earth-616. Malaysia just has Sunbird, a healer support for Marvel Future Fight. Nepal has the villain Bride of Nine Spiders, who has all the same powers as the Iron Fist, but can also summon a bunch of spiders. The Philippines has Red Feather as a national hero, as he's also the leader of the Triumph Division, a superhero group dedicated to protecting Southeast Asia. But the most well-known Filipino hero 
has got to be Wave. And she's basically Aquaman, but with waterbending abilities. And she's definitely the most useful card in all of Marvel Snap, so that's gotta count for something. Sri Lanka has the villain Senyaka, a mute who can drain people's energy and is a constant threat to Cable. Thailand has Avenger X, a mute with power absorption like Rogue, except she doesn't need to touch people. And in Vietnam, we have Mantis, like the one from Guardians of the Galaxy. Her actual backstory is very long and very weird, and a little bit on the terrible stereotype side, but thankfully all of that is basically tossed aside as she goes to space and turns green. And to round out the globe, we have Oceania. In Australia, we have Talisman, a magic user from the Contest of Champions. Manifold, a mutant who can communicate with the universe itself to create portals to literally anywhere. But the most well-known Aussie is still Pyro, the fire mutant who sides with Magneto. New Zealand has Russell from Deadpool 2, who later becomes Fire Fist. And to finish things up, in Samoa, we have Mondo, a mutant who can absorb any matter and form a connection to it, which is very helpful when they create a new mutant nation of Krakoa in the South Pacific. And that's my list. I know there are plenty of great characters from around the world that I missed, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you enjoyed this week's video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more weekly content on comic books and nerd stuff. I've been Eric, and you've been awesome.